sewing friends welcome to my sewing room my name is Beth and if you're new welcome I found these seven Sunbonnet Sioux quilt blocks at a garage sale today in my neighborhood the marker on the tag in the little bag was 30 quilt blocks and I only have seven <laughs> so I guess they uh, separated these Sunbonnet Sue's and I got seven. I laid them on my floor and really I need one more to make a quilt that's you know going to be a decent size. So I took one of those vintage Sunbonnet Sue blocks and I put it up on my window. This is a natural light box. I'm going to be making my own little pattern using this old quilt block. So I took a piece of paper and I just drew right around all of the shapes in this quilt block. Now the hat is going to be the right shape, but when I get to the little dress and the shoes, I need to add a little bit because those pieces get tucked under, this dress gets tucked under the hat, so I need a little extra there on the top. So I'm going to draw my patterns and make a few. This quilt block only takes four pieces. Here are my four little patterns and there are many ways to applique and I'm going to try to applique the way this quilter long ago did her applique and I am going to make my little pattern pieces, my templates, out of cardboard. So to begin with I needed paper to give myself the pattern and then I'm going to cut all of these little pattern pieces out of this cardboard using an old cereal box. I will not be uh, posting a pattern for this Sunbonnet Sioux. Of course my pattern is sort of homemade and I wanted to mention there are many patterns to be had that are free that you can find to get these shapes that you need for the Sunbonnet Sioux quilt block. I took my little pattern pieces here, I turned them upside down on my fabric because this is the, going to be the wrong side of these uh, little applique pieces. I'll have the pencil line on the wrong side of the fabric. It's hard to tell with these solid color fabrics because there's not really a right or a wrong side, but that'll help me know which side is the wrong side. And then when I cut them out, I'll be leaving about a half inch extra all the way around so that I have what I need to be folded to the inside there. The arm and the hand were constructed by using two pieces of fabric that had been sewn together ahead of time. So I took two small pieces of fabric, green for the arm and white for the hand, and I gave myself my seam and then I put my pattern piece on top of my fabric here and I drew around it. Actually, I remembered, oh yeah, I have a cardboard there. <laughs> so I got my cardboard and I drew my pattern just like I did on the others, but I used that line, I put that line on the seam.
after getting all my cardboard pieces cut out, I used those over on my ironing board and I just pressed the edges to the inside so that my little applique pieces, all I need to do will be to applique them on. And you could use spray starch to do this. I ha don't happen to have any spray starch right now. My starch bottle broke, the little nozzle broke on the top of it. So I'm just using water and it's working out fine for me. Actually, after I do all my pressing, I'm going to do a little bit of basting as well, just to keep the edges uh, nice and secure on the inside. Here are all my pattern pieces and I'm just going to take a needle and thread and do some really big basting stitches so that I don't need to fuss with the edges when I go to applique these pieces down. This is a different kind of applique for me. I have not done this kind where you see those big black stitches. Those are the applique stitches. So I'm going to take some embroidery floss, some black embroidery floss, and I will be just mimicking what this quilter a long time ago did with her quilt block. I'm going to go around the dress with some big stitches right as close to that fold as I can and I'll go around the shoes and then I'll add the hat and the arm. So that my quilt block will match the other quilt blocks, I'm going to add a buttonhole stitch here around the edge of the hat. It's uh, a different stitch. It's big and chunky and I go in and then I go out and just making sure that that thread is kind of going around the where my needle comes out so that I have that nice edge on my hat there. I'm almost done with Sunbonnet Sue. All she needs now is that ribbon and those flowers on her hat. So I'm gonna just draw a little pencil line and the, I'll be adding two stitches, two lines of that, again, that broken line, that broken black line right around this ribbon area of the hat. And then I'll be adding some flowers and leaves. All that's left now are the flowers and the leaves. So I'm gonna use some Lazy Day stitches coming out, going in right where I came out, and about a half inch away, I'll come out again with the loop around my thread and then 
I'll go back in to attach that loop and I'll do that five times for a flower and then I'll add some leaves using this same stitch. I now have enough blocks for a quilt, a decent sized quilt. This was a fun challenge to just try to match these old vintage quilt blocks. I'll um, come up with another quilt block to go between them all, but I think my new one kind of matches the old ones pretty well. And I did notice that they are not all exactly alike. Uh, this buttonhole stitch was on most of them, but when I looked more closely, I saw this one here that did not have that buttonhole stitch. It just had a running stitch, but that's okay. It'll uh, blend in just fine with this quilt. So thanks for joining me today, and I'll see you next time.